In the West and many parts of the world, we live in a free society. Unlike India, people can express themselves and are at liberty to criticize and mock whoever they want. Unlike India, and that principle has to be honored. Hopefully, one day in India, Hindus need to realize that claiming an emotional victimhood when a handful of individuals are insulting our tradition on social media. Or even in academia is not helpful. It either disempowers us through self-pity, or makes us feel we have the right to justify an overly aggressive approach. This is a very accurate depiction of the Hindutva that came after me. This is very, very accurate. I, I like this. I approve. I approve. This is exactly what comes to my mind every time. It's, this is just right. This, this right here. This is happening exactly in the live chat right now. Before we examine why others mock Hindu gods, we need to ask if we have done enough to honor them ourselves. There are around a billion Hindus in the world, but how many of us understand who our main deities are? That shouldn't be your priority. Your main priority should be like, why are we having anti-intellectualism sp spread so ramp rampant in India? Okay, maybe you could focus on deities later. But I mean that's fun focusing on deities, but that should be your main concern. Do we comprehend their nature and do yeah, your you know understanding of your deities is really fun. To be fair, I enjoy it, but that's not gonna save you. That go and study your deities just for fun, okay? It's not gonna help. You're not gonna help Hindus, okay? It's just gonna be good for entertainment. Comprehend their nature and do we connect with their divinity? Yeah, none of this is going to help you in any way. In fact, it's going to reduce the fun. Okay. Again, if you're looking at the story of Kali and instead of being like, "Oh my God, that was such an epic story!" Wow, I enjoyed reading that. If instead of doing that, you're look, you're trying to read between the lines and be like, "Wait, what is the moral message here?" You're ruining the fun. You're destroying the enjoyment that you could be getting out of mythology. Okay. You're like you're trying to invent something that doesn't exist, and it's just going to be stressful. Okay, I tell Muslims, Islam is so much fun if you don't believe in it. I'm going to say, tell Hindus as well, Hinduism is so much fun if you don't believe in this nonsense. If you don't believe that Kali is literally your mother, okay, it's so much fun. There's so look at the there's so many colors, so many so much art, so much, such great food, dance, fashion. History. There's so much fun in the Hinduism. Don't ruin it with actually believing that any of this is true. And if you, yeah, this is not going to help you. This is not going to help Hindus. This is not going to help India. Comprehend the need. You, how is this? Any of this is going to help you? That 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 insisting on reason part that this guy was dismissing. That's the only way out of out of all of this mess. That's the only way out of all this mess. Are we a Hindu who enjoys sophisticated philosophy? Sophisticated philosophy. Sophisticated philosophy is the type of philosophy that relies on the reason that you were just dismissing. But views the various deities as tools for the less intelligent. No, there shouldn't be tools for the less intelligent or people in high intelligence. It should be tools. Tools. Your deities should not be used for philosophy. Your deities, if they're used for philosophy, they only do bad philosophy. They ruin philosophy. Your deities should be just used for entertainment and enjoyment of culture. That's the only th thing your deities are good for. Okay? Do not mix your deities with philosophy. They're only they're only okay. It's a poor, it's a it's a it's a dumb person's philosophy. That's what they are. Okay? They make really dumb philosophical takes. Seem more intellectual and more, you know, nuanced and more useful than they actually are. What's the word I'm looking for? More. Hmm. There's a word that I'm looking for that I cannot. Doesn't come to my mind. More. Anyone in live chat? Or are we perhaps a cultural Hindu 
that celebrates Diwali once a year but has no knowledge of the religion. Cultural Hindus are great, okay? Here's the thing. I don't like the term atheist uh, Hindu, okay? Atheist Hindu is, a, I don't like the term, okay? Atheist Jew, I don't like the term, okay? Cultural Hindu, I think that's a great term, okay? If you're an atheist and a cultural Hindu, okay? If you say, I'm an, I like the term ex-Hindu, I like the term cultural Hindu, I don't like the term a atheist Hindu, okay? It could be an atheist ex-Hindu or an atheist cultural Hindu. What does it mean to be a cultural Hindu? It means like, I don't believe in any of this crap, but I like the dance, I like the colors, I like the mythology, I like the stories, I like the history, I relate to it, it's nostalgic, it brings me memories of my childhood, I enjoy it, I enjoy participating in it, but I don't believe any of it to be true. That, that's what cultural Hindu means. I enjoy the culture, I enjoy the tradition, but I don't think any of it is true. Cultural Hindu gets my stamp of approval. Cultural Jew gets my stamp of approval as well. Okay, cultural Christian gets my son Papa Pua. You could be like, I'm an atheist and a cultural Christian. What does it mean? It means I enjoy Christmas, I enjoy Easter, I enjoy churches, I enjoy uh, biblical art, I enjoy this. I don't think any of it is true. I don't think there's a God. I don't think Jesus was real. None of it is true, but I enjoy it. Cultural Christian, love that terminology. You could be cultural Muslim as well. You would like, I like aid, I like... Arabic calligraphy, I enjoy the structure of mosque, I don't think, I think the Quran as a moral lesson is horrible, as a guide to life is disgusting, but as mythology, as, as a source of stories, I enjoy the stories, cultural Muslim, okay, not an atheist Muslim. Not that, a cultural, atheist cultural Muslim. Okay, so not an atheist Hindu. But anyway, that book is good, despite the title. Check, uh, check it out. What about just Hindus? No, not just Hindus. Don't be a Hindu. Be an ex-Hindu. Don't, look at me, look at me. Don't be a Hindu. Be an ex-Hindu. Be a cultural Hindu. Hindu that celebrates Diwali once a year, but has no knowledge of the religion. Unless Hindus themselves see and experience the sacredness of the different deities, how can we expect the rest of the world? Profound! That's the word I was looking for. Profound. More profound. They make, they try to make the philosophy more profound than it actually is. Like, you could have like very simple takes in philosophy, something that the dumbest people could understand that is idiotic. And you could just wrap it in a story of a goddess and be like, ah, mind blown. I see this so deep. It's so deep. But if you take the imagery away from it, if you take the goddesses and god away from it, if you take the symbolism or the imagery away from it and just, just, just like, oh, this is the point, and we're like, yeah, that's, not, that's actually kind of dumb. That's actually, or it's either so simple that anybody can understand, like, like, yeah, it's obviously true or it's obviously dumb. But the imagery and they're like, oh, this story, like, I'm going to put this here. And we're like, look, and this, the goddess did this. And that's how we learned this. And that's how we know the source of energy is this. Like, like oh, my God. People are like, ah, ah, yeah, that is deep. That is deep. That, is, that must be true because I enjoyed the story. That's how the minds work. I enjoyed the story, so that must be true. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, that story was so deep. Oh, like this poor person came to a king and the poor person said this and the king didn't have any answers. And then the poor person went away and that, ever since then people said this. <gasps> that's true. That's, a, that's such an inspiring story. That philosophy that you just you know, communicated with us in that story format, it must be true. No! No, just because the story is interesting, that doesn't mean the philosophy is true. This is a danger with stories. That's why you should separate stories from philosophy. You have to evaluate any philosophical take. You have to just apply logic and just enjoy stories just because they're stories. You know what stories are good for? Stories is for good for teaching moral lessons to children. To children, not to adults. Adults should evaluate any philosophical takes. They just, just look at that 
I'm like, hey, does this make sense? Let me apply logical fallacies and see if this makes sense. That's how you do it. You don't do your stories. Stories are for children, for more or less. I mean, stories are for also for adults. But as adults, you should only use stories for having fun, not for moral lessons. It's dangerous if you use stories for moral lessons because you might be get convinced of something that is not true just because how interesting the story was. Hold on, what is this? All right, did I miss any super chats? No. Two. These gods and goddesses carry the very meaning of our existence, hmm. but the let us. There's a non-statement here, okay? Here's the these gods and goddesses carry the very meaning of our state existence. You know what this means? You know what this statement means? Absolutely nothing! But the lack of conviction from Hindus only contributes to other people de-sanctifying them. They naively end up being equated with superheroes or Exactly, that's what they are. They're, they naively are equated with superheroes. Maybe it's because your mind is too small to comprehend the philosophy of superheroes. Have you considered that? Right? Maybe that's what it is. Naively end up being equated with superheroes, or worse, being used in offensive decorations. Ooh. The solution is to create a tsunami of educated individuals who can robustly and honestly articulate the glory of Sanatana Dharma. What you're doing is not education. You're misleading people and you're telling them to not rely on reason and intellectualism. That is, at, that is the opposite of educating people. And push back against the abuse in a compelling and rational way. Hey, what happened? What? Wait, 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 what? In a compelling and a rational way? Rational way? Huh? 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 I thought, I thought we are not going to. Uh, where is this? Where is this? Where is this? Mm, where is it? Insist on reason. Hmm. You don't get to use rationality. You already dismissed it as a tool. You already dismissed it. You can't use it now. Individuals who can robustly and honestly articulate the glory of Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana right? Dharma, Hold on, let's see. Superheroes, or worse, being used in offensive decorations. The solution is to create a tsunami of educated individuals who can robustly and honestly articulate the glory of Sanatana Dharma. Dharma and push back against the abuse in a compelling and rational way. Our retaliation should be both strong and sincere. Hindus have to play the long game, which means taking the time to discover and practice the tradition they stand for. The aim is not necessarily to make everyone agree with everything we are saying, but it is to build awareness of what Hinduism truly is. It's nonsense, that's what it is, based on this video. Um, it's beautiful if you don't take it seriously as, tr as reflecting reality, but if you do consider it reflect that if you do think it's consider it reflects reality then it's absolute horse crap we must create a fortress of understanding that strengthens the conviction of hindus why is this guy literally just looking at the wall this is this a is this a reflection of hindus why is this guy just staring at a wall okay Strengthen Hindus. Standing that strengthens the conviction of Hindus, enlightens non Hindus, and withstands the scrutiny of rationality. Uh, it withstands the scrutiny of rationality? 
<laughs> good luck good luck with that good luck with that you know you know why you were saying that people should not insist on rationality do you know why he was earlier in telling people that they shouldn't insist on rationality because hinduism is not going to be able to withstand the scrutiny of rationality that's why they're afraid of rationality there will always be individuals who enjoy provoking and causing offence. That's hey, this is a picture of me. <laughs> He's talking about me. There will always be individuals who enjoy provoking and causing offence. Well, not okay. So here's the thing: it's not the the offence is a side effect. It's a unfortunate side effect. Your reaction is what makes the provoking necessary. Because your reaction is an indication that we have a problem here, right? So the offense that is, that is being caused is an unfortunate side product, but the provocation is the, is the main reason why we do what we do so that eventually what we do is not provocative, right? We're trying to create a world where... A goddamn drawing of a goddess doesn't cause half of, I'm exaggerating, half of India to lose their mind. Okay? If that's what happens when you post a cartoon of a goddess, you guys need to be provoked until you realize that this shouldn't be provocative. Because your priorities are not right. If that's what you're concerned about. If that's what makes you worried, if that was makes you lose, spend so much time into going after like so much precious time of you guys, like this is a sickness that your country has been afflicted with, and we're helping you cure it. Okay? Again, I'm telling you, I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep doing this, and a few years from now, I don't know exactly how many years from now, I'm we're gonna be dropping one of our cartoons, and there's gonna be no reaction. The Hindus are like, oh, that stupid Armin is just making another drawing of our goddess. Who gives a crap? Let him do what he wants. And that's when we come and say, mission accomplished. This is not provocative anymore. You're welcome, India. Do you have any other problems you want, you want us to solve? Do you want us to solve your caste system? Do you want us to solve the poverty in India? Huh? Is that what you want? Because we solve one of your problems. Give us the next thing. Give us what, what else is on your list. Huh? That's what we do. We come and solve your problems for you, okay? So yeah, we're provoking, but eventually we're, it's not going to be provocative. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're going to continue doing this. In a couple of years from now, we're going to one of our cartoons that is going to be dropped. We're going to notice that we're like, hey, Susanna, look at this. We're not getting that. Look, we released another, another, another goddess, a Hindu goddess, sexy Hindu goddess, another one. And look. Nothing is happening. We, we're not getting many reactions. Nobody's upset. <gasps> and then we're going to celebrate. We're going to be like, yes, we did it. We did it, Susanna. We did it. Sajib is saying, I think Armin's going to yell to subscribe today. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not going to do that. But it is possible through our conduct and education to make enough Hey, what if I put my microphone like this and then yell to subscribe? Then maybe nobody's ears will like hear, get hurt. What if I do that? Can I do that? Like if I don't, if I, my microphone is not here, like if I yell at the end to subscribe, but my microphone is like this, can I yell then? Then nobody's ears is going to be like damaged. People have respect for our practices. The People. reason why I'm not yelling is because I don't want to cause ear damage. That's why I'm not yelling. It's not my dharma to yell anymore. It is possible through our conduct and education to make enough people have respect for our practices. Hey, I have an idea. What if the wokey version of India is people could identify as whatever the caste they want? And then we invent new casts, and people will have personal casts, and people will be like, "I just invented the cast today, and I'm identifying as this cast." And people, other people, are like, "Hey, here's my new cast. Can I, does anybody want to join my cast?" 
We shouldn't. We should make that a thing. We should make random ca people should be like making casts and naming it, and anybody could identify as whatever cast they want. Cast flu yes, cast fluidity. That's genius. Oh, somebody else is already doing that. That's what Fijian Hindus do. Damn it! I thought I was being original. and education to make enough people have respect for our practices even if they no no do not believe in them instinctively they will feel uncomfortable degrading them hey you guys sound so much like these muslims they have no idea like yeah you don't believe don't believe in islam fine but at least respect them do not degrade them nope 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 you don't get to make that a condition again this is what people say like hey you're an atheist i know you're an atheist but we accept atheists but we only accept the atheists who do not crap on our religion sorry that's that's you don't get to you don't get to create conditions for acceptance okay You'll accept atheists, you will be forced to accept atheists while they crap on your religion. That's how tolerance works. We do that with Muslims and Christians and everybody else that thinks that we deserve to burn in hell or this or that or whatever, or be killed or whatever. We, we tolerate them, right? We tell them like, hey, you could be our friends, you could be our neighbors. You could be our co-workers. It's fine. I know you're, in the, you're promoting a book that says I'm evil, that I deserve to be tortured for eternity. But hey, we can still be friends, I guess. Um, so given that we are promoting that level of tolerance, I think you guys could also try tolerating us even while we're not promoting torture or killing or anything like that. We're just crapping on your ideas. It's not that hard. It's not that big of a request, okay? You could, you will learn to accept us as friends, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, even while we crap on your ideas. You get, you will, you will, you will. You'll learn to do that. I, I believe in you. You will do that one day. Rather than getting hot-headed and emotional. This is me, apparently. Oh no, this is the Hindus that came after me. When dealing with criticism and mockery, we need to use the great personalities of Hinduism as our example. When seeking to protect the honor of Mother Kali, we should look to the intent. Mother Kali doesn't need you to protect to be protected. Mother Kali is energy for well, power. It's the essence of power. Do you think the essence of power needs your help to be defended? You need, you need protection from Mother Kali. You're making her angry. Kali, we should look to the integrity that Lord Ram displayed. We need... The integrity that Lord Ram displayed by setting her own wife on fire because of rumors? Yeah, no, not the best role model. Ram displayed. We need to imbibe the wisdom of Patanjali's yoga system. What the hell is Patanjali's? Patanjali's, I think I said it right the first time. Patanjali's yoga system. We need the humble longing of the great Bhakti saints. And we need to learn the visionary and intellectual prowess of our great Acharyas, such as Shankara and Ramanuja. In the face of abuse, it is these values that Hindus should demonstrate to the world. Yeah, values. Setting your wife on fire. Great values. If we can do this, then those who wish to ridicule Hinduism will be viewed as dogs barking in the wind and the true mm. effulgence of Hindu Dogs barking in the wind, that's exactly what Muslims tell me whenever I criticize Islam. Like, oh, you guys are just dogs barking in the wind. Then why are you, wh then why are you so defensive? Yeah, sure, sure. Why is atheism growing in India? Why are so many people leaving Islam? Sparking in the wind. I mean, what do you have against dogs, by the way? Wait a minute, I missed the point. Why do you guys... Yeah, this is an anti-dog. Wind. and the tr I bet you they learned this from Muslims, because this is exactly... I've heard this so many times Muslims say this about me. You guys are being influenced by Muslims. Sparking in the wind, and the true effulgence of Hindu Dharma will shine forth once more.